In this set of JavaScript exercises, we're going to look at working with the DOM again, and in particular on building up a registration form. Hi, this is James from Junior Developer Central, and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to be building up a registration form with validation and submission, all whilst practicing our JavaScript skills. If you do have a second before we start, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel, and so you don't miss out on any future tutorials. So in this tutorial, we're going to be working with this bit of markup that we have on the page at the moment. And if we take a look at that, it's just a simple bit of bootstrap styled HTML that has some IDs in certain places and just has those bootstrap classes for a bit of styling. And we mainly just have a username, password and confirm password input box followed by a registration button at the bottom. So nothing too complicated there. And in our JavaScript, what we're going to be doing is solving the various exercises by only using JavaScript. So it might be that some of the exercises are easier to solve simply by adjusting the markup or adding some CSS. But as we're practicing our JavaScript, the idea is for you to go through the exercises and solve them with code rather than changing any of the template. So I'll put a link to this code pen in the description below, and you can either go ahead and try all the exercises out and come back if you get stuck for a solution, or alternatively, you can jump to the various solutions using the links below. So let's get started with exercise one which is rather bizarre as we're being asked to add a label to each of the input fields, the username, password, and confirm password fields. So this is something that would be super easy to do if we went into our HTML and added those labels in, but let's do this using JavaScript using a handy insert function. So to start off, let's grab one of the elements. Let's get the username via its ID. And I'm going to call the insert adjacent HTML function to just put a blob of HTML next to that first input field, which will just be a string. So there we have the string representation of the HTML that we're going to add, and the insert adjacent HTML function requires two arguments, and the first argument is where we're going to be adding it to. So we have the option to put it in different places, but I'm going to put it before the input field. So there are various other positionings that you can use here, such as before end, after begin, or after end, and they will all place the HTML in different positions relative to the element that you've selected. So with the first one done, let's just copy and paste that and adjust it for the password and confirm password boxes. So now you can see we have all of our labels nicely displaying, and we did that without touching the HTML template. So that about wraps up exercise one, let's move on to exercise two. So exercise two steps up the complexity a bit here because we're adding a validation to each of the inputs that when the user tries to fill out the form and they don't provide a value in the input, we're just going to display an error message next to it to tell them that that input is required. So I have a solution for you for this one and it does get a little bit messy. So if you do have a better solution for exercise two, feel free to post it in the comments below or share a link to your completed code pen. So what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to create a new function called check input. And this function is going to take in an event object, which is passed from an event listener. And we're going to use that to check the condition or the state of the form to decide whether or not we need to put an error message on the page. So the first thing I'm going to do is check for the existence of any other error elements on the registration form control. And I'm just going to be using a basic span tag to display the error message. So this line of code will just look for any span tags next to the input element that's just been filled out. So we're going to check if the value of the input element is blank. And I'm going to explicitly check for an empty string, although you could just check if the value is faulty. I'm then going to check if there are any error elements next to the input. So if there aren't any existing errors, let's add one in there. So we can use the bootstrap text danger class to set our text as red, which will highlight it as an error for us. And checking the error element.length to see if there are any other errors next to the input will just prevent the error message from being repeated. Of course, we want to remove the error message once the user has actually completed the field. So let's put something in for that. So we kind of have the reverse if statement here from above. So we're assuming that there are errors next to the input and now the input is not blank. So let's just get rid of any errors that are there. 
And now all we need to do is set those up as event listeners for when the user has moved away from one of the fields. And to do that, we'll set up a listener for the blur event. So let's just try that out on the username field. So you can see by skipping the field and not entering a value, we get the error message appear. And if we enter some text, when we move away from the field, the error is removed. So let's just set up the event listeners for the other inputs too. And let's try that out. So there we have some validation for our input boxes. So that's pretty much it for exercise two. Let's have a look at exercise three. So exercise three is asking us to add a further validation to check if the password and confirm password inputs match. So that's a pretty common thing. If we've got a confirm password box, we want to make sure that the user has entered the same one twice and alert them if they haven't. So let's set up a further event listener on the confirm password input. And this is just a simple case of checking whether the value that's supplied in the confirm password box matches the value inside of the password box. Of course, you don't have to use the longhand ways of referencing the elements. You could store a reference to them in a local variable, which will make your code a bit shorter. So here we're just saying, does the value in the confirmed password input not equal the value that's stored in the password input? So if that's the case, let's insert another error message informing the user that the passwords don't match. So let's try that out. So if we don't enter anything, we just get the required option. And if we put in different values, we get the password should match error. And of course, when they do match, the error disappears. So this is why it was useful in exercise two to loop through all of the error messages that may be put onto an input box and remove them when the validation is good. So that was reasonably straightforward for exercise three. You may have got a different solution if you had a different solution for exercise two. So let's move on to exercise four. So exercise four is asking us to basically disable the registration button so the user can't click it and only re-enable it once they've actually entered all valid data into the input fields. And for valid data, you can just assume that the input fields have been completed so that their value is not empty. So for this approach, I'm going to first grab a reference to the button element. And there's only one button on the page, so I'm quite safe to use the query selector option. But obviously, if this was a larger project, we'd need to grab it via its ID or a specific CSS selector. And the first thing I'm going to do is set the disabled attribute on the button to disabled. So you'll notice in our registration form now that the button is a lighter color and you can't actually click it now because it's been disabled. So the button will be disabled by default, but we need to add an event listener to change that when the form has been completed. So I want to determine whether the form has been completed. So I'm going to do this by selecting all of the inputs and then checking that each one of them has a value. So here I'm just wrapping a selector to all of the inputs. <clears throat> Again, you'd need to use a more specific CSS rule if you're using this in a real project in the array.from function so that it converts it into an actual JavaScript array. And because it's an array, I can call any array function. So I'm going to call the every function, which returns a true or false value depending on whether every item in the array matches the condition. So when every input field has a value, the form is filled variable should be true. So if the form is filled, let's actually remove that disabled attribute. And you can see when we've filled the form out, the registration button is now enabled. The only problem we've got at the moment is if we actually then make the form invalid by removing one of the items, the registration button remains enabled. So let's disable it if the form is filled variable is false. So let's try that out. So the button's enabled. And when we remove one of the values from the form, the button becomes disabled again. 
So I think that's a simple way to disable the button for the registration form. And it's also a good example of using a standard JavaScript array function in a user-based context. So let's finally have a look at exercise five. So for the final exercise, when the user clicks the registration button, an alert message should be displayed to them informing them of a successful registration. So although the form is not actually doing anything on the back end and actually registering a user or anything, we're just going to update the user interface so if this was a real registration form, the user would be informed that there has been a success. So let's go ahead with the solution for this one. I'm just going to grab a reference to the actual form. which I'm going to use inside the event listener that we're going to configure. So I'm going to set this up on the submit event of the form, which is quite handy as if the user hits the return key whilst filling out the form, this will actually trigger the registration process as well. So the first thing we need to do is stop the form's default behavior because the traditional method for a form is to actually post or get some data to a backend resource, but we're not actually doing that in this case. So let's just prevent that from happening. And then let's create a new div element to show our alert. And because we're using Bootstrap, we can add the alert and alert success classes to the div, which will give a bit of styling for us. And then finally, we're just going to add this element into our page. I'm actually going to insert it into the form element which probably isn't the best place for it, but just to show you another method for inserting HTML into a document, calling the prepend function allows our new element to go inside the form, but to become the first child so that it's at the top rather than being appended to the bottom of the element. So let's go ahead and submit our form. So you can see now, once we've completed all of the inputs in the form, the passwords match and the registration button is enabled. We can click it and we get that notification that the user has been successfully registered. So in reality, you'd probably be sending some network requests to see if the user is, can actually be registered or not. But once that's completed, you can include the code that we've created here to show the user that they've been registered. So that pretty much wraps up the second part of the JavaScript DOM exercises. I hope you found them challenging and useful to learn a bit more about how you can apply your JavaScript skills. As always, it'd be great to see your solutions, so don't forget to post them in a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and for future tutorial updates.